College Hoops is driven by Jeep Grand Cherokee. A look down North State Street here in the Windy City. Snowy Chicago on a Sunday as we're coming to you for a marquee women's basketball showdown between the 15th ranked of all Blue Demons and St. John's. Hi everybody, Kim Adams, John Fancy here with you. These are two of the best in the Big East Conference. They were picked at the top of the league's preseason poll, yet Kim, they enter today with different mindsets. Well, for DePaul, it's been business as usual. Off to a 4-0 start in Big East play, powered by their 86 points per game. As for St. John's, they're coming off of two frustrating conference losses. So Coach Joe Tartamella, he's looking for some more fight out of this group. We've got some of the best scorers, some of the best distributors in the conference today. We start with the reigning Big East Tournament most outstanding player in Shante Stonewall. And she's having a player of the year season, John. 19 points per game in Big East play. That's fourth in the conference. She is a two-way player, also leading the team with three steals per game. She does a lot of her damage in the paint. On the other side is the reigning Big East assist leader. She stirs the drink for Joe Tartamella's Johnny Tiana England. And she's going to be the X factor against this high pressure DePaul defense. You see the 10 points per game, one of four in double figures, but they're going to need her to assist at a high rate and really limit the turnovers, John. The Blue Demons are perfect in Big East play at 4-0. One of their biggest challengers in the conference is St. John's. We'll see what kind of test is ahead. The tip-off is next. Let's look at today's starting lineups brought to you by Jeep Grand Cherokee. A change for St. John's, their second leading scorer, the freshman guard, Leilani Correa, gets her first career start. Her eighth year head coach, Joe Tartamella. And on the other side, the legendary Doug Bruno with his same starters that he's been using throughout Big E's play. Lexi Held and Sonia Morris oversee a dynamic backcourt with Kelly Campbell as the glue senior. There are a ton of dynamic guards in this matchup, John, on both sides. Neither team has a lot of size, so we're going to see some dynamic, energetic guard play. It's Correa for St. John's, Stonewall for DePaul, Blue Demons in the home whites, Red Storm in the road blues as we are underway. Third weekend of Big East play, and DePaul unblemished, coming off a 17-point win over Seton Hall. St. John's all over it defensively. KB with the breakup. And we say Coach Tartamella wants energy, and a lot of that starts on the defensive end. A good job starting the game with a nice deflection to a steal. Here's England. Four assists per game. Third in the Big East. Tate on the shot clock. Off to Correa, and the freshman making the most of her first career start. And John, you will not think she is a freshman as this game goes on. The confidence she has brought to this group, the mentality. Morris with a tough runner. And Sonia Morris, as good as she can shoot the three, she really likes taking it off the dribble. She's got a really smooth mid-range game, as I'm sure we'll see this afternoon. The sophomore's taken a big leap for DePaul, and she's got the basketball now off the stop. It's Blue Demons offense averaging 86.8 points per game, and you can see why. They never stop running as Deja Church, the impact transfer from Michigan, scores it. And that's what Church wants to do. This team is known for their three-point shooting, but she's more of an attacker, so you have to keep her in front, especially in transition. 
Alston Hoyt and buries the triple. Hot start, John, for both of these teams. A lot of snow in Chicago last night, but these teams are bringing the heat early. Mother Nature has brought some Big East women's hoops with her, and the trifectas are raining down in Chicago. It's Kelly Campbell. Well, we said these were the two highest scoring offenses in the Big East. We're seeing that early. Some threes, some drives from both teams. How about Campbell Friday? 13 points, 10 rebounds, 5 assists. Doug Bruno calls her the do-it-all for this team. Correa off this time, and it'll go back to the Blue Demons. Joe Tartamella in his eighth year at St. John's has led the Red Storm to the postseason in seven of his eight seasons. Morris feeling it for three. And Sonia Morris, difficult to guard because now we've already seen her score in two waves. We've seen her attack the rim. We see her drain a three, and I think her mid-range may be the best of the three of those, John. DePaul four for four to start. And if you're surprised by the three-point shooting, don't be, because the Blue Demons average over 11 threes per game, second in all of women's college basketball. They can go down low, too. Here's Stonewall on the back down. Not this time, and the Johnnies will get it back. And, John, interesting there to see the freshman, Leilani Correa, matching up with Stonewall in the paint. St. John's had a really tough time defending the interior against Marquette. Doug Bruno in his 34th year has led DePaul to 17 straight NCAA tournaments, five of six Big East regular season titles and four of the last six tournaments as well. KB on the baseline, doubled, overcame it and scored. Both of these teams, John, will really spread you out. Four or five players on the perimeter, a lot of off-ball movement screens. Have to be very communicative as a defense. Morris can't finish. While they combine for about 163 points per game, that was all the more reason for both coaches yesterday in shoot-arounds. They didn't focus on offense. It was all defense. And that's the first thing, especially when you play DePaul. Transition defense. Stonewall didn't do it that time. right on cue, Kim. Two biggest things. Any team who faces DePaul. One, transition defense. Two, guarding the three-point line. And a lot of times that's interchangeable because they will love to pull up from three in transition. Blue Demons forcing over 23 turnovers per game over their last nine. It's been incredible how they've been able to get out on the break as we've got a foul this time on Morris. And you think, who are they doing it against? Well, one of those games came against UConn where they forced 21 Husky turnovers and cut it down to single digits. Yeah, Don, there was only one game they haven't forced over 20 as the threes continue to fall here at McGrath-Phillips Arena. Already the fifth triple. That came from Kadasha Hoppy, the dynamic junior. Top five scorer in the conference, and Sonia Morris, the sophomore, is on fire. Came in shooting 40% from three. She's already got two, and here come the Blue Demons again. Reigning Big East champs flexing their muscles early. This time held Travis. Doug Bruno looking on here as his sophomore is delivering. And that was just too easy. There was no contest, no hand up. When you are playing the DePaul Blue Demons, any player that steps on the floor will hoist up that three. So you always have to have a hand up and make it a contested look. Morris with eight of the 15. England on an island. Left hand. That was pretty. Ooh, a little scoop shot there. They will look to ISO a guard on the right side. Really nice job by England turning that corner and getting into the middle of the lane. A foul away from the ball on Hoppy. That'll take us to our first timeout. Catch your breath. You won't have many chances to do it. We're going to have a high-scoring affair in Chicago.
Welcome back to Chicago where the DePaul Blue Demons have a 15-13 edge. Both teams have come out hot from three, but Sonia Morris, the sophomore guard for the Blue Demons, she's got eight points on three of four shooting. She's cashed out twice from behind the arc. And, John, you mentioned that she's made a tremendous leap from her rookie season. Morris losing 26 pounds over the offseason, and we told you to expect offense. Here are the numbers. DePaul, they're typically a team that averages in the high 80s, but for St. John's, this is a newer style. In fact, the Red Storm are just a point shy of their single season average scoring record of 76 points per game. That was set back in 1981. Yeah, John, it's been interesting even watching them on film and Shante Sova keeps up the hot shooting. But watching St. John's on film, you had to get used to it a little bit, really looking to push that high outlet pass off of makes, misses, push it off of turnovers. Austin, the Ole Miss transfers feeling it. She's added a nice element to this team. Not only can she score, but she's probably as quick as any guard in the Big East off the dribble. Stonewall with four unanswered. And that's where St. John struggled in the final minutes against Marquette on Friday night, defending the interior. Shante Stonewall, she's done a lot of damage posting up lately. So we'll have to see if they can adjust to a tougher coverage on her down low. Here's Correa. He's got three. Short this time. And it'll go back to DePaul. You think about it, Kim. St. John's in the past seasons under Joe Tartamella has gotten it done with defense. They're scoring the ball much better. How do they avoid letting DePaul dictate the tempo? Well, that's what Coach Tartamella said. He said, we're scoring the ball at a high rate and an efficient rate, but we're not guarding as well as we can. So they really have to lock in on that, and that's a good way to get it done. Alicia Cavey swatting that thing. She sets the tone for them defensively. Absolutely. Let's take another look at this. Just a vicious come from behind. We talked about having to adjust that coverage on Stonewall. Shante, that time had her shot altered as well. It'll go back to St. John's. Bailey coming up with the defense. And John, you can see in those two blocks the length that St. John's has on the perimeter. They're not that big down low, but their guards are long. Correa, Bailey, KB, they're all 5'10", 6 feet. So New York City in them. A lot of New York City power on this team. Kept it local. Hoppy pulls. A wedgie in this opening quarter. Hate to see it. Hate to see it. Not too many of those from her. She has really improved her shooting percentages this season. Not too many of those from you when you were playing at Penn. I don't know if I ever had one, actually. Not that, it, that that's... Exactly. I just, it's just such a strange occurrence. Maybe, what, one out of a thousand jump shots ends up like that? Kim's being humble. She had the high field goal percentage, folks. I've learned it all from you in our <laughs> pregame shoot-arounds, John. Here's Hoppy. He's the Big East Freshman of the Year two years ago. Alston keeps it in with 10. And a giveaway by St. John's. Their first turnover. The turnovers have been a problem for this team in their last two losses against Villanova, against Marquette. They have to take that extra second to jump stop, collect yourself and make it the pass on target. On the drive, tough for Bakelja, and this one's long. But they get it back, Morris from the elbow. No. And St. John's will get the basketball back here down four. And when you're playing this DePaul team that's 14 and two, Doug Bruno, one of 12 finalists named earlier this week to the Women's Basketball Hall of Fame because he's got a patented offense. And Joe Tartamella said part of it's just weathering their storms. Right, and really a lot of teams in the Big East to start have been in the game with DePaul, but they will go on their signature runs where you're down two and all of a sudden a couple turnovers and you look up and you're down 12. So you have to be able to expect those and to stay locked in and just get back and get it done on your end. Here's a look at the 12 nominees. How about this class? Tamika Catchings, Swin Cash, Doug Bruno spending time with both those players in his time with USA Basketball. Paul Sanderford, the Western Kentucky legend. He and Doug Bruno are really good friends, and Coach was humbled to hear the news earlier this week. 
then he may be humble about it, but no one else who is a friend or a fan of his would be. Boy, does he have his players fired up from the jump for this one, John. Stonewall with nine points already. Hoppy can't hit. A.B. has had the hustle and the muscle here. Gives them an extra opportunity. This DePaul program in the last seven years against Big East opponents, 110 and 19. Hence a Hall of Famer. Three on the timer for Hoppy. And the Blue Demons are now coming up with defense and they always look to run. Stonewall, no. The Kelja got it. NFL playoff season, John, that was a touchdown pass up to Shantae Stonewall. And you have to have all players sprinting back. You have to locate the ball and everybody else has to sprint back and match up. Final minute of this opening quarter. Blue Demons on a 7-0 run. 10 on the shot clock here for England. Pull up. And DePaul has forced St. John's to a three-minute scoring drop. It's time a giveaway. Let's take another look at this. Just right away, Sonia Morris, eyes up. Shante Sobal doesn't make the layup, but look, another teammate, Deepa Kelja, was there. She out-hustled every other St. John's player. For St. John's, that should be capitalizing on a missed layup, rebound the other way. But they got out-hustled, which Coach Tartamella said they've been outplayed and out-hustled in their last two losses. You said it, NFL playoffs. It was that type of pass. I know you're excited with some Browns news breaking right before this one. Not that they're in the playoffs, but... No. On the drive, it's Hoppy. And DePaul's defense stifling St. John's. How about the ball moving up the floor here? Rejection by Bailey at the 10. The Kelja lays it off, and it's put in by Church. And again, just the hustle plays from the Blue Demons, second and third opportunities. A 9-0 run. Drake out of control with two KB. And DePaul closes the first quarter with defense, holding St. John scoreless for the final four minutes. The Blue Demons at 14-2, winners of five straight, and we're seeing why. Up 11 after one.
FS1 College Hoops is driven by Jeep Grand Cherokee. A beautiful look at the windy city here on a Sunday afternoon. The DePaul Blue Demons high-powered offense leading them to a, an 11-point lead on St. John's after one. Here at McGrath Phillips Arena, DePaul not only did it with offense in the opening quarter, Kim Adams, they also did it with defense and a turnover-free quarter nonetheless. Yeah, St. John's five turnovers to DePaul's zero, and that was a signature DePaul run. They typically do it at the end of quarters like that, where you may loosen up mentally a little bit and a couple turnovers, and all of a sudden you have a 9-0 run like that. You have to be so mentally sharp for an entire 40 minutes against this Blue Demons team. Correa with the rebound off the Campbell miss. England can flat out fly. Connecticut native, time long. There's a lid on the bucket for St. John's, a five-minute scoring drop. And DePaul's also been committed to getting back. They haven't really allowed St. John's to get much in transition. Shante Stonewall just on a roll, up to 11 points. A foul on the Kelja going for the rebound. Shante Stonewall, now in her senior season, how have you seen her evolve? I think we're seeing just, she knows it's her team now. She's really dominating offensively. She's asking for the ball in the post, and you can see her energy. We've seen her in practice a couple of times. She never lets up. Energy is always high. Every second of practice, leading the team, keeping everyone upbeat. Correa getting her first start today, this time long, but KB with another rebound. She's had a couple of hustle plays for St. John's as England hoists, and the drought rolls on. It will stay with St. John's, though, with 10 on the shot clock. You see Alicia Cavey there. She's really trying to fire this team up. She's gotten a couple O boards. She's been on the floor. Now she needs her teammates to pick up that energy as well. St. John's has missed 11 straight shots. Seven on the shot clock here. Alston all the way, and it breaks up the drought. Alston can really turn the corner on you. That time, a nice controlled finish. Other times, she's been out of control a little bit. Morris, short. After the battle for it, it will stay with the Blue Demons. St. John's coming off an 85-point performance against Marquette. They shot the ball over 50% from the field, over 60 from three. And thus far, it hasn't translated here today. They come up with the stop now, and it'll go back to the Johnnies. And that Marquette loss was a real frustrating one for Coach Tartamella because you mentioned how well they shot the ball, and then they gave it away in the final four minutes. The Golden Eagles, a young Golden Eagles team, finished the game on a 14-3 run. Alston with the Euro. Fancy! Now they need to get a stop, John. They're getting a little fluidity, a little confidence on offense. Now you need to lock down on that end. Hook at Hoppy Fly. That's some of the best hair in the Big East. And one of the better moves we've seen. Everything but the finish that time. That, that almost was, went. That was too bad because she flew through two defenders. Just step through, half step. England with the board. Tiana England, an All-Big East selection last year, led the conference with six assists per game. Here's Alston. Double. Great feed to KB. Timeout to Paul. And St. John's has turned on the Jets. Now it's a great read by Alston, who had a couple drives that time, making the jump stop. Finding her teammate, St. John's, looking to cut into this lead. They trail DePaul by seven.
Julian J. Rock Williams steps into the ring to defend his title against J. Som Rosario. It's the Super Welterweight World Championship, Saturday at 8 Eastern on Fox and the Fox Sports app. Number 15, DePaul. Winners of five straight out to a seven-point lead on St. John's. And the Red Storm have turned it on with a 6 nothing run. They've come out with more intensity on both ends to start the second quarter, John. DePaul just one of six from the field to start the second. St. John's three of seven getting a lot of activity from the Ole Miss transfer, Alyssa Alston, who has nine early points. And now St. John's. They said that they try to apply some pressure, but DePaul combats that with two-man action. Well, both teams will really look to get up and pressure you, and St. John's, they, as we mentioned, they have some real length on the perimeter with their guards. Church with the spin. Can't finish. KB with the box out. And that was Alter because of the length of Leilani Correa, who has a few inches on Deja Church. Joe Tartamella playing some checkers before this game, moving his starting lineup around, and it's paying off. I think that was a good decision. When you've been in a rut, you lost a couple games. Sometimes good to change things up, and Correa just such an instant score as a freshman. Here is the freshman. Off to Alston with three. Alston trapped. Correa with the heave. Got it. They will check it. But it appears she got it off in time. Jeffrey Smith, John Capolino, and Ashley Gilpin want to head to the monitor here. And they'll probably check that at the next timeout. We'll see if we could get a good look at it. Oh, clearly, clearly not even a question there in the slow-mo. As long as the ball is off of her fingertips before that red light goes off on the backboard or the zero hits. I guess they'll review it right now. Correa right on cue, Kim. She's up to six points now with her second three. And the freshman, a highly rated prospect out of high school. Joe Tartamella says the Manchester, New Jersey native just is a different breed. You can see the, the pure shot-making ability she has there. And they will count that as the three, beat the buzzer as we suspected. But Leilani Correa, her and Maddie Segris from Villanova, the only two rookies who have won weekly Rookie of the Week awards in the conference. Both of them very, very impressive. What a duo. Correa spending time with USA Basketball as well. Was on the U18 three-on-three team. Sonia Morris with a three. That's her third of the game. That was a high arcer, John. For a second, I thought that was going to sail right over the rim for an air ball, but Sadia Morris gets it to drop right through the net. Johnny, six turnover. Here's Held. Campbell. Back to Held for three. What an offensive rebound and the putback for Church. Joe Tartamella wants to stop things now. He calls a timeout. These are the plays you can't give up to this DePaul team who already on first chance opportunities, such a dynamic scoring team. Joe Tartamella not happy with that one. DePaul on a quick 5-0 run to regain a nine-point advantage. And St. John's head coach Joe Tartamella told us, Kim, that you have to anticipate DePaul's runs at times and stop things with a timeout. Right, you can't let them get it rolling. They get an offensive board, they get a turnover. You let that happen and you get back and you make sure it doesn't happen the next time. Correa in rhythm, up to eight points for the freshman. to Paul, five for eight from three thus far. 
Church fouled. This one's on the freshman, Correa. John, really the only player who hasn't gotten going for DePaul yet is Lexi Held, and she's been their top scorer in the past two games. On the inbounds, Campbell can't finish. England behind the back. And another giveaway. A seven by the Johnnies. Here's Morris in transition. Church with the board. The Michigan transfer has added a rebounding burst. It's held. Can't hit. Another fight for it and a third opportunity. How about a fourth? Held keeping it alive. The John, that's, that's inexcusable. Not one person boxed out on any of those four attempts. Not one St. John's player located a body. Do they have a size advantage? No. But you can get an advantage by getting position and pushing out. And not one player did that. You've got a DePaul offense that averages 87 points per game. It also leads the Big East with 15 offensive boards as Hell travels. That's the first DePaul giveaway. Doug Bruno, he told us last week he wrestles working on rebounding because he wants it to be intense in practice. But he said sometimes those are the drills that cause the injuries. Yeah, I think Lexi Held told us she had gotten a tooth knocked out. Of, I know some of my teammates did. Those drills are brutal sometimes. Kelly Campbell had a nosebleed earlier this week. And a turnover by the Blue Demons, a little too quick on the run. Joe Tartamella with a rare grin. Yeah, he's uh, frustrated by these turnovers, the lack of boxing out, two areas that hurt them against Marquette. And they have to realize right now, they're only down seven points. It may seem like more. They need to finish this quarter strong, run their offense, and get some buckets. This St. John's team picked behind DePaul in the Big East preseason poll. Tested in non-conference play. Gave Florida State a run for their money, but a turnover now. Stonewall off to Morris. But another offensive rebound, the eighth for DePaul. How about a ninth? And finally, at long last, St. John's keeps them from scoring somehow. Alston. And head to the free throw line is Correa. John, I, I can't imagine the frustration from Coach Tartamella right now because his players are simply not running back on defense. You have to have all five players in the paint rebounding when a shot goes up. They got very lucky that a layup didn't drop in there. Ten offensive boards for DePaul so far in this game. They average 15. Correa into double figures to lead the Red Storm with 10. She's got the last seven points as well as KB comes off for Emma Nolan. Emma, the twin sister of Sophia. St. John's with two sets of sisters on this team. Kadasha Hoppy, Shamaka Duncan, the other. Morris for three. And DePaul all of a sudden is in a drought. Nearly three minutes. And John, sometimes it is difficult to rebound against this DePaul team because they're pulling you out. They've got players on the perimeter. The rebounds are long because they're taking a lot of threes. But some, a lot of these offensive boards have come in transition with players just not hustling back. Blue Demons are three for 19 in this second quarter. Drake, the freshman, with a turnover. Morris looking to get the offense restarted. She can't hit. Oh, one for eight from three in this second quarter as Alston's way off. But Correa comes up with the play. St. John's is lucky right now, John. They could be down by about 20, but DePaul hasn't capitalized on the second chance opportunity. The iron kind from the corner. Just like that, it's a two-point game. Alston leads the way with 12. The Kelja, the answer. You leave 
the blue demon open from three, John, is a good chance. They're going to knock that down. Miscommunication on the screen. Bekelja left wide open to knock down the tray. St. John's, after giving up 94 to Marquette, their highest point total allowed in the regular season in over a decade. They've only allowed 10 here in the second quarter to DePaul. Six on the timer here for Correa. Alston's been the hot hand. She heaves and is short. How crucial are these final 100 seconds of the second? Very crucial because DePaul competes for every second of the game. So St. John's has to match or out-energize them in this final one and a half. Coaches around this league say sometimes you, you're in a game with DePaul and you look up at the scoreboard and in a minute's time, what's a four-point game can become a 12-point game. You have to protect the ball, get back on defense. Also kick out, hoppy in rhythm. Can't hit. And Schertz fought her way to that rebound. Church really brings the aggression on both ends. We've seen her fly to the basket on some drives. We've seen her go after the ball. Oh, but Kelja put the spin cycle on. Beautiful move by Bekelja, but nobody steps in to help for St. John's. Where was the help defense, John? Nowhere to be found on that possession. Up to seven points for Bekelja as Correa the three. Leilani Correa with her third trifecta and she's got 13 first half points. The freshman really bringing the confidence, keeping her team in this one. Need to continue to get everyone involved. There's an open cutter. Here's Campbell. Four second difference between shot and game clock. What a first half. These the two teams at the top of the Big East preseason poll. Living up to their billing as Morris is fouled. Alston whistled for it. That's only her first. And here comes this beautiful spin from Dee Bekelja. <laughs> Realized she had unique Drake on the opposite shoulder. But again, John, you need to have a player stepping in to help either from the corner or from the opposite side of the paint. That just another defensive breakdown. Out of Solon, Ohio. Here's Sonia Morris, 11 to lead the way for the Blue Demons, not to mention the seven rebounds and four she's, assists. She's just aggressive. She's as competitive as a player I've seen in this league. She has that killer instinct. She'll attack you, and that's the beauty of this Blue Demons team. She had an off night a couple games ago. Tonight, Lexi Held having an off night, but they have so many offensive weapons. Lexi Helds, one of those, was on the All Big East freshman team, but today, scoreless in this first half, despite being a top three scorer on this team. Seven seconds left. St. John's looking to go into the half with momentum. Correa has been the one to do it for them. Leilani just long, and that'll do it for the first 20 minutes in an entertaining first half. The Blue Demons winners of 14 of 16, but they have gotten tested by this St. John's Red Storm team. St. St. John's, they have to feel pretty good just being down six points because there's been some times where they've been out hustled in this one, John. They're going to have to come out with a little bit more energy on the defensive end to start the third quarter. DePaul, winners of five straight, up by six here at the break. St. John's outscoring them 19 to 14 in the second quarter. Game on in Chicago. We're going to have an exciting final 20 minutes here in the Big East. DePaul up by six at the break.
We welcome you to the Jeep Grand Cherokee Halftime Report. We're at the break between St. John's and the Lady Blue Demons. Rob Stone with you. We're going to get you back out to Chicago in a moment. But first, a closer look at DePaul, who has claimed a regular season or a conference tournament title every year since the Big East realigned. And despite all that success, this season's Blue Demons are as focused as ever on reaching their goals. Our team definitely has a lot of goals this year. Um, I mean, being uh, winning the Big East three times in a row, Big East tournament three times in a row would be huge for us. But we also want to win the outright, the conference outright. So that would be really nice as well. And then personally, I mean, making it to the Sweet 16 has always been a huge goal of mine. And a few years back, we were just a possession or two short. So that would be huge for us. I believe that we can go as far as we want to. Um, only thing honestly stopping us is us. Uh, we have some very large goals to uh, accomplish this year, but um, to be in the Big East and go through all, all of its adjustments historically, we have had so much success. So our job this year for this team is to, is to continue that success and have a great season. Playing for DePaul definitely has a huge tradition. Coach Bruno has a legacy himself of 17 straight NCAA tournaments. So putting on the DePaul jersey has definitely been a dream for me. I've always wanted to play at the highest level. It's been a huge goal of mine and it means a lot. I mean, it means putting in work every day to keep that tradition. And I think that's definitely something we strive for to maintain Coach Bruno's tradition and DePaul's tradition as well. Of course, Bruno has so many sayings. Um, one of my favorite that I honestly take into every game is that um, he always preaches every game has a life of its own. You never know what's going to be in that particular game. Um, so something that he mentioned to us in the beginning of the season is every season has a life of its own. And so it's our job to write our journey. We go off to sell. We have this little analogy. We, have, we go off to sell for nine months and it's our job to conquer our journey and face any adversity that comes our way and to have a great journey until we get back home in March. Yeah, I mean, the Big East has some great talent and every night you're playing someone different and every team has great players so really it's fun to um, prepare for them and play against them and that's just what makes the Big East so great is every night you're playing someone who's really competitive and every team's great so it's been really fun playing. Well after today the Blue Demons they hit the road for two games starts Friday when they meet Xavier and then travel to Indiana as they face Butler next Sunday the weekend after that DePaul begins a four-game homestand, begins with Villanova and Georgetown. Men's College Hoops doubleheader coming your way Tuesday on FS1. Starts at 6.30 Eastern, 11th-ranked Ohio State. They host the Cornhuskers. That one followed by 16th-ranked Villanova meeting DePaul. And we're back out to Chicago after this short break. Enjoy that second half.
They don't call it the Windy City for nothing. We're here in Chicago, a back and forth affair. DePaul up six on St. John's at the half. Second half coming up. Big East College Hoops on FS1 is driven by Chief Grand Cherokee. We are in Chicago for a heavyweight showdown in Big East women's hoops. DePaul, 40, St. John's, 34, as we take a look at our Chief Grand Cherokee halftime highlights. Well, DePaul overcame a slow scoring second quarter because of these offensive rebounds, which have to be driving Joe Tartamella crazy. They have 11 offensive rebounds in that first half. A lot of third and fourth opportunities, just inexcusable. Coach Tartamella is fired up. We'll see if his players come out with a renewed energy on the glass because right now I'd say, John, they would be tied or winning this game if not for the difference on the glass. And they're actually lucky because DePaul has only converted six second chance points on those 11 offensive boards. It's our treat Grand Cherokee halftime stats. You're exactly right with just the six second chance points. Leading scores. Sonia Morris and Shante Stonewall have combined for 24 points. The top two scores for this DePaul team. On the other side, Leilani Correa, we're a number two for St. John's there in blue. She has stepped up with her first career start. 13 points and five rebounds for the freshman. And another first-year player, Alyssa Alston, the Ole Miss transfer. She has 12. So the two of them have combined for 25. Nobody else on the Red Storm has more than four. So we'll look to see if... They get some of their starters going a little bit more here, John. 
You talked about a St. John's adjustment. If you're Doug Bruno, what's the message to your team? Well, he had to have been infuriated in that second quarter, John, because they shot just 5 of 23, 21%, 2 of 10 from 3. So they need to get back to moving the ball a little bit better and getting some higher percentage looks. Hoppy, short. And Church with the rebound. She's been all over the glass now with 7. Here is Deja Church. Got good experience at Michigan. Knows power conference basketball and has brought it to this DePaul team. Ten on the shot clock. How many times the Blue Demons are in these situations? Five to go. Church with three. Tough shot. And the Red Storm comes up with a stop. Very disciplined defensive effort there by St. John's and DePaul again, a little bit more stagnant than we're used to seeing them offensively. They're usually whipping that ball around, inside out, around the perimeter. Here's England. Now 10 on the shot clock. Alston asking for a screen, instead drives. And that never had a chance as Stonewall stepped in with defense and KB charged with her first foul. Alyssa also just needs to get a little more consistent on once she gets into the paint. She's been out of control at times like she was on that last one. She could get into the paint whenever she wants. She has the quickness. She has the first step. But when the defense collapses, you need to jump stop. If you have it, take it. If not, kick it out. Stonewall, LeBanc open. She's up to 13. And John, I thought they got away from going inside to her in that slow second quarter. So right off the bat to start this second half, going into where she is very efficient on that low block. Ten on the timer here for England. Kick to Alston for three. Just off, but KB wills her way to her fifth rebound. Kaby's the only one on this team who's attacking the glass on either end. She needs her teammates to do a little bit more. Hoppy, great maneuverability. Hoppy didn't do much in that first half, just three points. They would love to see her get going. This team's leading scorer, one of the best scorers in the conference. Out of the Patrick School, McDonald's All-American nominee. Joe Tartamella has said, we go as far as Q takes us. And here's that nice drive. Badasha Hoppy. Good nickname, Hoppy, because she loves that little hop step. It was perfect. Very ironic. Now 20 points away from 1,000 on Hoppy's career. Morris off to Stonewall. Can't hit. And that time, Hoppy with the rebound. That's something Joe Tartamella said. As good as she is offensively, her she can still grow by helping them win in different ways, defending better, rebounding better. He'd like to see her be more active on the glass like she was there. Hoppy with another drive, and this time she's fouled. And John, she's just got that little shiftiness to her game. She kind of, again, to say hop, she hops a little right, hops a little left. Gets the defense off balance. Here it is, little head fake in it. And DePaul not doing a good job of reacting when their teammates are getting beaten. Hoppy able to get right to the rim. Hitting on the first free throw. Joe Tartamella, her head coach, saying she's the one kid who during the offseason did everything we asked of, and then that carried on to the rest of the roster. Well, her, she's become a better decision maker as a result. And her shooting percentages have really increased. Last year, 36% for the floor. This year, up to 43 her three-point shooting up from 31% last year to 43% this year. She's making the most threes per game in the Big East for conference play. And where it matters, from 11 points per game to 17. Four-point game. Things have slowed down here in this third quarter. Five on the shot clock, held with the teardrop. Got it. Her first points of the afternoon. Again, Lexi held last two games, two 20-plus point games, averaging 22. Slow start for her to get going, but she can get going early. We saw her hit some back-breaking threes in that close win on the road over Marquette. Ten on the timer here for Alston. Both these teams going deep into the shot clock. KB with five. 
Coffey, tough shot. And a battle for the board. Correa willing her way to an extra opportunity for the Red Storm and a fresh 20. And we didn't see that in the first half, John. Both of these teams really aggressive. First half, it was all DePaul on the glass. Right now, we're seeing an increased awareness and increased commitment to rebounding after giving up 11 offensive boards in the first half for St. John's. A foul underneath on Stonewall. KB fighting for positioning, just Stonewall's first foul. We've only seen nine combined fouls between the two teams. Right, we were saying it, it seemed like that first half flew by. That's because there were only four free throws attempted. St. John's off to a three and two start in Big East play. A tough loss to Villanova last Sunday. And then despite scoring 85, falling at Marquette. Happy, beautiful drive, but couldn't finish. And DePaul this time comes up with it. Here's Hell looking to accelerate the tempo. Morris, three threes in the first half, this time driving. To the corner, it's Campbell. Happy with the board. Campbell, another player on DePaul, John, who's been pretty quiet here today so far, just three points and they've definitely really slowed that pace down from a hot start in the first quarter. Anglin with the left hand just rims out. It's almost as if St. John's has gone back to their old style here in the third. Three seconds called on Stonewall. John St. John's really impressive with their defensive execution to start this second half. You can see they're really keeping players in front of them. And that's how DePaul breaks down the defense. When they blow by, you get into the paint. That's what sets up all of the open threes. And right now, all five St. John's players on the floor have committed to keeping their player in front of them. And they have frustrated this DePaul offense. A DePaul offense that came into today ranking third in the country with 87 points per game. I'd like to see St. John's be a little sharper in some of these passes. Sometimes they get a little lackadaisical. Corner three for England. Just off, and the Johnnies in a two and a half minute drought, but Correa with hustle. Back to her junior point guard. Now Hoppy for three. Bailey with the rebound, and the putback. And Kadeja Bailey needs to be aggressive like that all the time. You see the length of her arms, John. She's had a quiet last couple of games. Her minutes have gone down a little bit because of it, and Coach wants to see her bringing that energy. Johnnies have brought that Queens grit with them to Chicago as a foul underneath the Kelja on the take. And she'll have two free throws out of the timeout. We've got a two-possession game here in the Big East. St. John's within four of DePaul.
Welcome back to Chicago. St. John's closing in on this DePaul lead, trailing by four. And Coach Tartamella really was looking for an increased fight to his team. Well, he's starting to see it. Kadeja Bailey, the talented sophomore, gets active on the offensive glass. That gets Joe a little fired up there, John. He likes to see that, but his team needs to keep up this energy. They have limited DePaul to seven of 30 shooting from the second quarter till now, John. They have really picked up the defensive intensity and now they really need to start knocking down shots at a high percentage to tie this game up or even take the lead. You've seen DePaul a couple times early in Big East play as Bekelja is at the free throw line for a pair. What's been the difference for St. John's defensively as opposed to some others? Well, I think they have frustrated DePaul. DePaul, to me, this is as out of sync or just the lowest energy I've ever seen them have on defense. And I think they're frustrated because right now they can't get by players off the dribble. St. John's guards are quick, they're long, and they've done a good job of containing penetration. And without penetration, those DePaul threes don't come as often as they normally do. Kiara Dahlman into the game. Just averages two points per game, but Doug Bruno said it's the goal for this Blue Demons team to incorporate her more into what they do. On the drive, Hoppy will head to the free throw line. She's hopping everywhere in the lane in this third quarter. She hops, she glides, she's just so smooth, John, as she just attacks that lane. She's really picked up her intensity in the second half after a slow first half, but she, like Alston, those two can really get into the paint whenever they want. They have that explosive first step. Kadasha Hoppy on the all-metropolitan third team last year in and out on the first. Big East freshman of the year in 2018 and out of the Patrick School. Well-known school in the metro area, a McDonald's All-American nominee. One for two this time, and here comes the press. First time we're seeing this today. The bench is in it. The intensity is up. Church. Finds a way to break the timeline. Pass deflected. England and Stonewall. A jump ball. It belongs to DePaul. And John, I like that look of putting on the press. Even though you don't get an immediate turnover off of it, all of a sudden DePaul is just starting to get into their offense with 20 seconds instead of 30. So that's 10 less seconds of defense that you have to play against that constantly moving half-court offense. Joe Tartamella did say there's something about coming to this building and finding some success. He's done in his career in 2016, led St. John's to the Big East Tournament title right here at McGrath Phillips Arena. A kickball will do it again. And that was St. John's first Big East Tournament Championship since 1988. I think we were both here for that one, John. Aaliyah Hanford, Denasia Grant, those two guards, prolific scores. That was a, a real shocker. They beat DePaul in the semifinals and then beat Creighton in the final. Big East Tournament this March at Wintrust Arena. Doug Bruno discussing things here, as is Joe Tartamella. Joe in year number eight as the head coach of this program. Was actually a great athlete in high school. Smithtown High School played basketball and baseball. And went to James Madison before getting his Masters at St. John's and serving under the legendary Kim barnes Arico, who's the winningest coach in St. John's history, now at Michigan. Seven on the shot clock for Stonewall. Now with four, and a foul is called on Alston. And that is just so frustrating, John. Actually, I had to slam my fist down on the table at that one because I knew if that was my teammate, we played such great defense, and it was a foul. She reached in and made contact. Stonewall had nowhere to go. That is one where you just have to keep the vertical plane for that last three seconds. Ah, tough to see. The emotion out of you, Kim Adams. Held short on the three. Well, 
It ended up not costing them. They get the stop. Here's Hoppy. Going through again and finds the roll. Kadasha Hoppy up to 10 points. Right now, DePaul has no answer for Hoppy. She's gotten into the paint at will, and she's had no help that has stepped in anytime she's gotten to the rim. St. John's has been scoring at a historic rate this season, but today they've returned to their old selves defensively. Another stop. They get within one or tie it here. And John, by slowing it down themselves, they have taken DePaul out of the style that they like to play. DePaul hasn't been able to rebound and get out. They trailed by 13. Correa will head to the free throw line. Held with the foul. And John, this is just a noticeable difference in the energy level of St. John's. They're playing together more. They're hyping each other up. They're translating energy from the defensive end to the offensive end. And right now they look a lot more confident than they did in that first half. Correa swishes home the first. How about the confidence of the freshman today? She's been incredible. Uh, she's been a little inconsistent at times throughout the start of Big East play, but I watched that full Marquette game, and even though they lost, she stood out right away. A really good first half, especially a natural score, length, size, can rebound, can defend. 17 points against the Golden Eagles. Morris off on the three. Stonewall on a fight for it. All sit to the floor, and another jump ball. Position, possession arrow with DePaul. Joe Tardamella, intense as ever. Has led this program to the postseason. Look at that defense, John. Alston letting Hill get nowhere, cutting off that baseline drive. Stonewall foul before the shot. It's the fourth team foul on St. John's, so they're last to give. And it's amazing to think that just not even 48 hours ago, St. John's gave up 94 to Marquette. That was a wild one. You mentioned they, they shot almost as well as a team could shoot and then just got careless on the defensive end in the final few minutes. England with a deflection. It'll stay with DePaul, but the junior point guard has brought it. DePaul just six points in this third quarter. This is an offense that averages 87 points per game. And on the shot clock here for Church. Blue Demons need a bucket, and she's fouled. So Deja Church, an 81% free throw shooter, heading to the charity strike. Kodasha Hoppy getting an explanation on that call. Joe Tartamella not happy with it. I did think she did lower that arm a little bit. You have to stay completely vertical. She did drop those arms a little bit. If you just stay straight up and jump within the plane, you won't get a whistle call. There really is a lid on the bucket for the Blue Demons. That's just the fourth missed free throw of the year for Deja Church. One for two this time. How about the St. John's Red Storm? Three and two in the Big East, but a win here in Chicago today would have unlimited mileage, both for their conference standing and the NCAA tournament resume. Well, we talked to Joe Tartamella, and one of the frustrations that he's had with this team in their last two losses is he says at times he doesn't know who's showing up on this team in terms of being mentally locked in. And so far today, John, especially in the second and third quarters, we've seen not just two or three players, but all five players that are on the floor are locked in and bringing the intensity right now. game in Chicago. And here comes that press again, which Joe Tartamella said could be the X factor to the game. He's pulled it out here in the third quarter, but Hell beats it. Stonewall to Morris. Couldn't finish. 
St. John's last lead was three to two in the opening moments of this ball game. How about this, John? It is loud in here. It almost sounds like a St. John's home game right now. Feels like March. Quarter three for Austin. St. John's has the lead. The Johnnies, they have brought it out of the locker room, starting on the defensive end, starting on the glass, and now they're starting to knock down some shots. A 10-1 run, Stonewall. No. St. John's picked second in the Big East. Hopeful for a Big East title this year, and they're showing us what they're capable of right now, as England can't hit the runner. It's a little over a six second difference between shot and game clock here. And DePaul looks bewildered right now, John. I haven't seen them with this lack of confidence yet. They look, they don't know what to do right now. 50 to 47, Red Storm. Moore is short on the three, and St. John's can hold it here. DePaul, winners of five straight. Their only two losses. The two of the best teams in America, UConn and Oregon State. Here's Alston with five. Alston, no. With two seconds left, that'll do it for the third quarter. The reigning Big East champions are facing their biggest test of the season in the conference to date. St. John's taking the lead on this triple from Alyssa Alston. The Red Storm looking for a signature road win. To the fourth we go. The St. John's Red Storm once down 13, up three on number 15 DePaul after three quarters. Academic Ambition, sponsored by SoFi. Get your money right, all in one app. And today we're looking at Kadasha Hoppy, who's turned it on on the court. And over the holiday season, after getting a 3.5 GPA, Kim serving the homeless in Staten Island. And Coach Tartabella really raved about her as a person. You see she's involved in the community, he said. She's really our leader. She's the player that I can count on every day in practice to bring it every game. He's trying to get some of his younger players to reflect, and she's really been one of the jump starters that has gotten this St. John team off to such a great start in the second half. 
What's the key for them to close out a win at McGrath Phillips Arena? Close out is the exact word that Joe Tartamella said to us this afternoon. That has been their struggle. They've been in close games, and then they've gone in stretches where they start turning the ball over. They have careless passes, so they have to stay as dialed in right now as they have been in the second and third quarters. DePaul just a seven-point third quarter. After shooting 58% from the field in the opening 10 minutes, 21% in the second, 15% in the third. A wild turn of events here. Alston is fouled on the take. We can't say enough about Alston's ability to get into the paint today. They have not been able to keep her in front, and she has kept up her aggression time and time again, attacking this DePaul defense. The Ole Miss transfer was all reliable for the Rebels two years ago. Played a team high 36 minutes a game. It's Hoppy is hopping up and down after a triple. And I was going to say, John, she has been known for her three-point shooting this season. But so far, she's gotten it done in the paint. But now we're starting to see her score from anywhere on the floor. St. John's had only led 3-2 to two early in this game. Now with their largest advantage, suddenly at six. Held. No. Six on the timer. Did not reset off that backboard miss. Here's Held with two. Campbell couldn't hit it. But Church with the putback. And sending England down to the hardwood. Oh, Tiana England with a really hard fall going up for that rebound. Joe Tartamella talking with Jeffrey Smith on the sidelines. Here's another look at that. Just got tangled up. Oof. But she is showing the toughness. She's right back up. Church with nine points, nine rebounds. Hoppy is feeling it with 13. Ten on the shot clock now. England, the engineer for this Red Storm team with the crossover now with five. Alston, ball fake. Church with the board, her 10th and a foul. And Coach Tartamella is saying, why? Why do that right now? Especially in a, a close game, John, if this is going to come down to free throws, shooting two at the fifth foul, you don't want to pick up a silly foul like that all the way from the other end of the basket. Just get back on defense. Hell with the crossover. Great move. And she'll head to the free throw line as a result. So held an 81% free throw shooter to the line here. A sophomore from Burlington, Kentucky. Went to La Rosa. The Miss Kentucky basketball finalists. Learn how the American Cancer Society is teaming up with coaches at coachesvscancer.org. That's the third foul on Alyssa Alston. Lexi Held had a stellar freshman year, won freshman of the week in the conference four times. And now starting to turn it on here late in this game as Leilani Correa checks back in, Kim, and her role can't be overstated. She's been so confident offensively, and I really like what she's brought defensively as well. With those long arms, she's really been disruptive on the perimeter. Making her first career start, Correa with 15.7 rebounds. Inside to Bailey, who was swarmed by Hell. And that was just too tight. They had overloaded four players on one side. There was a perfect kick opposite, but DePaul just swarmed in and got the hands on the ball. DePaul with four on answer. Held for the tie. And a rebound by KB, who's been all over the glass today. She's got seven boards. Down the lane, Alston flies in. Blocking foul on the take. On Church. Alston has not let up in this game, John. We'll take another look at it here. We couldn't see there where the feet were. Deja Church was outside of that restricted arc. I think that that could have been an offensive foul. I thought she had good position. As long as your feet are outside of the arc, you are in position to draw a charge, which she was. 
Austin after 15 against Marquette Friday, now with 16 today. Her nickname, Drip. Drip, they say it's because of the outfits. I haven't seen any of them yet. I've only <laughs> seen her in the uniform. I'll have to check it out, see if it lives up to the hype. I'll tell you what, her coach is making a fashion statement today. That blue jacket. He had on some red socks, too, matching the tie. Joe Tartamella dressed to impress. Doug Bruno, though, he always keeps a classic with the logo on the polo. The three ball from Kelly Campbell. 6.6 boards, four assists for the Swiss Army Knight. Hey, when you're a Hall of Famer, you can wear whatever shirt works the best. Down the other end, the answer spins in for Austin. Nineteen points for the Ole Miss transfer. What a game. The Kelja. It will stay with DePaul. There he is, Doug Bruno. 34th season here at the helm. 17 straight trips to the NCAA tournament, joining just these schools. UConn, Notre Dame, Stanford, and Tennessee. And a giveaway for the Blue Demons this time. But that says everything you need to know, and it's why he's one of 12 finalists for the Hall of Fame. Absolutely. This list coming out just the other day. Three-time Big East Coach of the Year. A lot of involvement with USA Basketball has coached the top of the top. But right now, I don't know if he recognizes his team. They're careless with the ball, throwing it all over the place, not locked in defensively. 15 on the shot clock here for Alston. Now it's in the hands of Hoppy, who's turned it on in the second half with 13. England for three. Correa fighting with Campbell for the board, and Correa called for the foul. And that's a foul that you can live with if you're Joe Tartamella, because Correa just skied in for this rebound and got tied up. That's a tough call. That's a tough call. Both players were tied up there, but you have to credit Correa for really increasing her intensity going after the board. Campbell into Stonewall. They've got a mismatch with England on her. And John St. John's just keeping up the intensity on the defensive end. Here comes Bailey. Kadeja Bailey all the way. What a take to the 10 by the sophomore. That's what she's capable all the time. And that's what Joe Tartamella is trying to bring out of her. Held the answer from the corner. Lexi Held, one of the purest shooters in this conference, maybe in the country. That is her first three of the game. What a time to hit it. Listen to McGrath Phillips Arena. the shot clock. Hoppy. Oh my, what a drive, but couldn't finish. Held in the stone wall, back it in, and Shante will head to the line for a pair. And here's Kadeja Bailey, the sophomore her minutes had been down the last three games because coach wasn't happy with her effort. Lexi Held coming off of two 20-point games. Slower start today, but that three, her first of the day, brings her to seven points. Stonewall, a 79% free throw shooter. Shante, 20 points earlier in this conference season against Marquette. Double figures Friday against Seton Hall. Last year provided the moment of the season in the Big East with her game winner and then a stop against Marquette to secure a tournament title. And as KD returns for St. John's, Stonewall evens the score. We got a good one here, John. And we mentioned it before, St. John's has had trouble closing games. This is a big test for them right now on the road. They've had all the momentum really since the start of the second quarter. Correa, the freshman, was stripped. Somehow kept control. 
Ten on the shot clock for England. So calm, cool, and collected. Hoppy. Floater is good. And Kadasha Hoppy with 15 points, 10 away from 1,000. Hell traveled. And St. John's forcing the turnover. Fresh off getting the lead. We will take a timeout. Down the stretch we come in Chicago. St. John's powered by Q with a two-point lead. This is our mood right now, Kim Adams. <laughs> Absolutely. This has been a wild one, a back and forth affair. St. John's coming out with a lot of intensity in the second half, but DePaul so steady, so many veterans on this team. They are looking to get back in this one at home. We talked about closing out. Look at St. John's and games decided by one to five points. Just one in four this season. DePaul, they haven't played many close affairs, but 2-0 in those situations. So Joe Tartamella said it's vital. His team's been on the doorstep. Can they bang down that door today? And John, they've been in this game and taken the lead because of their defense. So that's where it needs to start. They can't have any defensive breakdowns in this final four and a half minutes. England kick. KB for three, couldn't hit. You have to be aware of the DePaul shooters. Stonewall will look to get it going down low. You have to identify and stay close to all the shooters on this roster. Held is fouled on the cut. And that is the fifth St. John's foul, which will send DePaul to the line. Here's another look. Just kind of a silly one again. Displacing her on the cut. And then we go back to that silly foul earlier in the quarter, John. This is where it starts to hurt you. Sending a very skilled free throw shooter to the line on bumping a cutter with four minutes to go in a one-point game. 
That was Hoppy's fourth foul. She's been the star for St. John's in the second half, so that is a big headline now. Held with all nine points here in the second half. Tied at 61. Everything you could ask for in a showdown between two teams at the top of the Big East preseason poll. Ten on the timer here for Alston. DePaul coming up with defense. England to Alston. Alston for three. Shot clock violation forced by DePaul. And that time, DePaul doing what St. John's has done well this whole game, and that's limiting penetration, keeping the ball handlers in front of them. They got England stuck in that corner, and St. John's had everyone else just kind of standing. Again, closing out games, continuing to run through your sets, especially late in the shot clock. Joe Tarnamella goes defense for offense with Hoppy having four fouls and brings Bailey in. Stonewall for the lead. But Morris comes up with yet another key offensive rebound. The 18th of the day for the Blue Demons. Ten on the shot clock. KB swarming Campbell. Here's Church with five. Deja Church is fouled. It's KB, her third. I don't know about that one, John. Coach Tartamella pleading his case. I thought that looked pretty clean from both players. Church, two for three from the line today with 10 points and 10 rebounds now. What have you seen her add to this group? She brings somebody who can really attack the rim. There are a lot of shooters on this team, and that forces the offense to really stretch out, and she's able to take advantage of that open lane and just always has such an aggression when attacking. Both teams with three timeouts left here. Three minutes to go in Chicago. It's been a dandy. Correa. Yep, great take by Lexi Held, getting position, and Correa, skilled as she is, a little bit of a rookie mistake there. That's her fourth foul. That's where you just want to come to a jump stop. She already had in her mind she was going to kick it out. Just jump stop and make the easy pass. DePaul down six early in this quarter. Now has regained the advantage they've had most of the way. Looking to stay perfect in the Big East. Off to a 4-0 start. Snap doesn't go for hell, but another foul on St. John's. It's on KB, and that's her fourth. The John, we're starting to see flashbacks from that first quarter where St. John's continued to give up offensive rebounds. When you talk about closing games, you have to do the little things right. Limit them to one shot. They're getting away from boxing out. And you send a DePaul team that's 13 for 14 from the charity stripe today. And John, DePaul only had two free throw attempts in the first half. So they have really amped up the intensity in terms of attacking, especially here in the fourth quarter. 65-61, Blue Demons. What a day for Morris. She and Church both with double-doubles, and Joe Tartamella looking to draw something up here. St. John's in a two-minute scoring drought. The Red Storm needs some of that Queen's magic here. Down the stretch, we come in Chicago.
A look at Michigan Avenue here in Chicago. Snow still making its way through the Windy City. And what a game we've had. DePaul, 65. St. John, 61. Final two minutes and change. And the margin for error so thin between these two teams today. You see the same amount of field goals, same amount of three-pointers made, a little bit of a discrepancy on the free throw line. And a lot of those free throw attempts for DePaul have come in the last few minutes here off of offensive rebounds where they have 19 on the day. Hoppy left open and capitalizes with a triple. Her third three to give her 18. But Asha Hoppy, one of the highest scoring guards in the Big East, one of their veteran players, someone coach can always count on knocking it down out of the timeout. That was cold-blooded. Ten on the shot clock. Morris on the take. The sophomore for two. Morris so tough. They actually had good help on that, but she was able to turn the corner at the last second and get to that rim. Here's Hoppy again. Thought about it. Alston, offensive five. For Austin, that's her fourth. And St. John's with four players with four fouls now. Let's take a look at this, John. Yeah. Austin did extend that left arm. Sonia Morris maybe sold it a little bit, but she was a little bit out of control. Definitely extended the arm. Can St. John's find that defense again that led them back into this game? And on the timer, Campbell to Church with five. Church on the drive, taking everybody to Church on a Sunday. That was good, John. That was a good one. She has been unstoppable on the drive. St. John has not recognized that that's all she wants to do today, and they have not sent help once she beats her primary defender. Uh, timeout for St. John's. 54 seconds left. Deja Church in crunch time. How about this finish to make it a five-point game? St. John's has had so many takes to the rim, and a lot of them have been successful, Kim, but they've led the Red Storm into foul trouble. See, four of the starters with four fouls, and they really can't afford to foul any of them out. They can all score in their own ways. They need to be very careful. Alston called for traveling. And a turnover by St. John's. Just the 11th of the day is Joe Tartamella. We'll put Drake in. Alston just a little bit out of control at times. You see the handle getting away from her. She's so quick, but sometimes you have to slow yourself down a little bit. Keep that ball lower. She goes right into the camera. That, that expression one. into your living room says it all. So now St. John's down by five. Traps. Deflected. Steal by England. Door cracked open. Down low, and Correa is fouled going up. And that foul call came from the official way out at half court. The official under the basket didn't have the call. I thought it was a, a clear foul there. So here is Correa at the free throw line. Tough miss. Here's Correa, the freshman. Got her on the arm there. Shooting over 80% from the charity stripe. One for two here. 
And Doug Bruno now calls a timeout. There's a timeout. And he's calling that timeout really, John, so he can advance the ball. Something that differs in the men's to the women's game, similar to the NBA. Once you hit the one-minute mark, you can advance the ball after a mate. We take a look at the big picture nationally. DePaul checking in at 15th in the country. Well in range if they can keep up the pace that they've been playing at and winning at to host a regional round in the NCAA tournament. And John, this poll will look a little different come Monday with both one and two losing. Baylor beating Connecticut, Arizona State beating Oregon. There's so much parity really right now. Men's NCAA, women's NCAA, but the Blue Demons really a staple in that AP Top 25 the last couple of years. And those two losses it bears noting as you take a look at their 14 and two record. The two defeats coming at the hands of UConn and then in Corvallis at Oregon State. Doug Bruno preaching to his team. They have found a way here up four with Deja Church back to the free throw line where she's three for four today. Correa fouling out off that whistle. So the freshman has to come off with 16. A great performance for the freshman. One that her head coach has to love to see against the reigning Big East champs. Her first career start, a lot of jitters there, and she handled it. Absolutely, and we said it before, she doesn't play like a freshman at all. You would never know if you were just watching the game. To Paul, 110 and 19. We told you earlier that's their record against Big East opponents since 2013. And they have flexed once again today. Six point game now, England. But it's a hoppy. Bailey for three, way off. Evie keeps it alive. Now Hoppy on the drive, and she is fouled. St. John's, this is still a two-possession game. These are must must make free throws for Kodasha Hoppy. Doug Bruno still has the two timeouts, and like you said earlier, it's Church committing her fourth foul. We could see him do that again to avoid having to face the press from St. John's. Hoppy. Burying the first, an 88% free throw shooter in conference play. What have you seen from Doug Bruno's team in the comeback? I've seen them come back to their style of play. I thought they let St. John's dictate the second and third quarter, took them out of their offense. Now they got back to moving the ball. I think Deja Church has been incredible for them today. She's been the aggressor even when they were in some slower scoring periods. Each team with just one timeout left. Doug Bruno has been added at DePaul, 34th season on the other side. Joe Tartamella's team has given them all they can handle. These two teams where they sit in the Big East, DePaul unscathed, but perhaps today a preview of what we could see deep into the Big East tournament come March. Absolutely. You see kind of a log jam there. A couple teams at three and two. Creighton, I saw them yesterday. They've been impressive. They were picked fourth in the preseason. Their only loss was a three-point loss to DePaul just last weekend, and they had plenty of chances to win that game. That log jam in the middle. It's going to be fun to watch play out. 18-game conference schedule. Get everybody home once, everybody on the road another time. St. John's look for a quick steal here, maybe a quick trap, but if you don't have the steal, you have to foul, start extending this game. Two possession game. St. John's in the penalty, so that's not a problem on the foul as they reset the clock. Set it at 21.9 ticks, held on the inbound. Stonewall, very strong free throw shooter, and now is fouled. Monte Stonewall nearly 80% from the free throw line this year. And it is her first trip.
of a charity stripe today. Sometimes in that first trip, Kim. Not as loose as she might want to be, but I'd be shocked if she miss, misses this one, Don. She is so steady. She's their veteran. Missed it. Timeout St. John's. They can advance. That is their final timeout. So now what do you do if you're Joe Tartamella off this tee up? This is a four-point game. I would go for a quick two right away. They've had a little bit of trouble scoring for three, especially in the second half. I would give it to Hoppy. I would give it to England. Let one of the two of them create your veteran ball handlers. But the other players have to be shot ready and ready to catch the pass on a kick out. But I would give it to one of those two, isolate them to one side, give them a ball screen and let them attack. But it's got to be quick. It's got to be quick because they need to get another score. Resetting this game, DePaul broke out to a 13-point lead and shot nearly 60% from the field in the opening quarter. Then St. John's found themselves outscoring DePaul 19 to 14 in the second, then 16 to just seven in the third quarter. St. John's defensively, Joe Tartamella said they're not where he wanted to be heading into this game, but Kim, perhaps this is a turning moment. Well, they have all the tools to be good defensively. All of their players are quick. They can move laterally. They're long. They're athletic. And he said it, it's more of a mental thing with them sometimes where they're just focused on offense and getting runouts, but they're not defending on the other end. Both but right teams, now, they need a quick two. Both teams in the penalty. DePaul with the one timeout. England, the inbounder to Hoppy. To the wing on the drive for Alston. Contact there. And now a jump ball. Possession arrow to DePaul. With 10 seconds left, they got a good look. And that was, that's a tough job because they perfectly executed it. They used Hoppy in England almost as a decoy to set up Alston all alone in the corner, who's been great at driving but hasn't finished consistently tonight. Well, DePaul with one timeout left. They will face the press here. They get it in, held foul. That's the setup you want if you're St. John's, Kim. Just couldn't convert. And that's why I really wanted to see it go to Hoppy or England because as, as quick as Alston is off the drive, I haven't seen her consistently be able to finish. It was a good set, but had the look they wanted, didn't get it to fall. In and out for Held, who's an 82% free throw shooter. So Lexi Held, nine points, has turned it on in the second half with those nine points. It's the second five-point game. They got to just hurry. Alston up the floor. Here's England off to KB, who puts it in with 2.1 to go. It's in the inbound and a timeout, the final timeout for DePaul. And that's a good timeout call for DePaul because now they'll advance it. So it would take a lot for St. John's to be able to steal at that end. They'd have to hoist up a prayer to tie this game up from three. England off to KB here, and the senior with six points, eight rebounds in this game. Tiana England really had a, a much better game today than she did against Marquette. She had eight turnovers in that game. Today really controlled the offense, took care of the ball, and we'll see if they have... One last push here in them, John. That yeah, graphic says it all. St. John's staring at one and five. The game decided by one to five points. Such a thin margin for error. For Doug Bruno's team, they'll head to Xavier and Butler next weekend. Stay in the Midwest. St. John's back home for Providence on Friday. And then a big one when Jalen Agnew and Creighton 
come to Queens next Sunday. Jalen Agnew, another candidate, Shante Stonewall for Big East Player of the Year. She has been scoring at an incredibly high rate. Yesterday, she really willed her team back in a comeback win over Providence. 2.1 to go, held on the inbounds here. Campbell fell, was tripped, they determined, and that'll send Kelly to the line. As Alston, that is her fifth foul, she's out. And that's pretty much a best case scenario for St. John's because no time ran off the clock. They called that foul before the ball was inbounded. But no timeouts left for St. John's, so they will not be able to advance the ball. Kelly Campbell can ice it here. Kelly Campbell on the season, 25 for 26 from the free throw line. That will do it. Ooh, I had jinxed one before. I was hoping you didn't do it as well, John. Campbell, the glue of this team, fittingly caps off a DePaul victory. St. John's led by six earlier in this quarter, but it's not enough. DePaul remains perfect in the Big East at 5-0. Oh. Doug Bruno's team finding a gritty way to win. It wasn't always pretty. The shots weren't falling, but they used their veterans to come to win. I think St. John's has a lot of positives to take out of this game, a tough road game against the top team in the conference, but I thought they looked a lot better than they have in their past two games. Blue Demons win it 74-69 over St. John's. For my partner, Kim Adams, this is John Fanta. We say thanks for watching from Chicago. What a game in Big East women's hoops.